Hey folks, good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to Who Moved the Market. A lot of things and a lot of factors which are moving around in the market today. But as we always do, today we are going to pick up a theme and make sense for you as to why it's moving, what are the factors, what are the triggers and what is the new slow. And today the sector in focus is defense because a lot of these stocks, the likes of Hindustan Aeronautics, we have Bharat Dynamics, MTA Technologies and a lot more. All of them at a 52 week high level. There are news updates, there are some triggers as well uh, for the sector as a whole. So we have our defense expert in house. Uh, Vivek Iyer is joining me today. Vivek, thanks a lot for joining us. Well, you know, we have been talking about this big defense push, the um, the uh, fact that government is pushing a lot as far as the um, Indian manufacturing is concerned as well. So a lot of these stocks are in focus, but that's the broader theme. What's specifically happening in this sector today? Uh, we have spoken about HAL and other stocks in focus. So, uh, tell us more. So first up, yeah. you know, thanks for having me. Um, so the defense space um, last year, year and a half has been buzzing and mainly on the back of the fact that there have been significant amount of focus from the government towards indigenization as far as getting Indian companies to manufacture. What's happened overnight is that, you know, some significant developments have happened. First, you know, we'll talk about the development that's happened at Hindustan Aeronautics. But General Electric and Hindustan Aeronautics, according to sources to CNBC TV 18, our, our colleague Parikshit reported this earlier. So what's happened is that the deal that they were working on has now received an in-principle approval and final modalities are being worked out. This is for jet engine manufacturing that HAL was working on. And the good part is, you know, at this point of time, it appears as though uh, GE will be able to transfer jet engine manufacturing technology to India, which was being seen as a significant hindrance to go ahead and make you know, mm. those high quality jet engines. Uh, the other one out, uh, in focus on the back of the floor is Mazgao Dock. Um, so Germany and India are closing on a deal to build diesel submarines in India. And looks like these two names, the Indian and the German arm, um, would be joining hands and would be bidding for, you know, whenever tenders come out as far as the Indian shipbuilding is concerned. Okay, so in both the sectors, there are uh, segments, so to say, we are seeing big updates. And uh, as you were telling us, jointly, they can bid for around $5.2 billion worth of project to build six submarines for Indian Navy. So that's a big amount, right? Significant. Mm -hmm. So uh, just imagine the kind of uh, uptick you see in the order books, right? So even if they win, you know, three or four submarines, the order book... Uh, size for these names are going to rise significantly and you know we, a little later uh, we'll talk about the order books for these shipbuilding companies they're all sitting at very significantly higher order books a lot of uh, uh, you know volatility in terms of the order book in terms of execution because remember you know no longer do shipbuilding companies have the right of first refusal or you know indian companies uh, earlier didn't have to go ahead and do the bidding they were mm. getting the orders mm. now it's a competitive based product but despite that you know order books are at all time high and which is uh, seen as quite a positive Development. The fact there is more competition means there's more demand and also means that uh, there is a fight for good quality as well. So that's working for shipbuilding and the other defense companies as well. But you know, you uh, briefly mentioned how indigenization has been a theme in the defense space. Apart from this, uh, along with this, of course, what are the other factors which are working for defense stocks? Because they've seen moves of what, around 20 to 30 percent in this year itself. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we've actually seen stock supply, you know, government has did an OFS in HAL, but, you know, it's been lapped up. Yeah. So, you know, uh, indigenization, like you mentioned, let's talk about that and let's just understand the kind of uh, uh, opportunity size that lies. So, Indian defense spends is amongst the top five nations globally, almost two and a half percent of the total GDP of the company. So this ranks in the top five in the world. So developed names like, you know, USA, you know, they spend that much and India was always amongst the top importers. But now what's happened is that India's and the government has put a focus on Indian companies manufacturing defense equipment and, you know, all of the necessary defense based uh, uh, equipment, you know, radar, sonars, which are all ancillaries for the defense space. Mm -hmm. So. What's up? There are four positive indigenization lists that have come so far, and this is what has aided the order book for all of the different companies as well as the ancillaries that uh, go ahead and uh, manufacture some of yeah. the smaller uh, so even parts. ancillaries are doing well and that is also the other uh, important point to not, not only the main product even the ancillary companies tend to benefit absolutely absolutely so the entire space uh, so it's the shipbuilding you know it's the helicopter manufacturing names like bl bml all of them you know that do some work or the other all of them have benefited from increased ordering activity and like we mentioned you know it's no longer india is no longer dependent on imports but mm -hmm. rather on you know manufacturing it itself 
Okay, interesting. So domestic thrust definitely working out for uh, all these defense companies. Uh, but you know, we've been talking about a lot of uh, activity as far as the offer for sale side is concerned. We're talking about institutional investors lapping it up. Now there's a lot of mutual fund interest as well. Uh, recently we spoke about the defense fund. Tell us more what's happening in that space. So this is very interesting and you know, this is what will excite market the most. Yeah. After a while, you know, generally you don't see thematic NFOs come out yes. or new fund offerings come out that often. So after a while, we are actually seeing HDFC come out with a defense fund NFO. And what is the aim of the fund? They're going to invest predominantly in defense and allied sector companies. Mm. And what is the good part? What we understand is that, you know, they wanted to raise around 1,000 crore. They lapped it up immediately and uh, they actually had to close the NFO offering a couple of days prior to where uh -huh. they intended to close. So that's how much, you know, they were getting. And remember, a lot of these stocks have run up. So despite that, you know, the kind of opportunity that markets are seeing, so markets are willing to ascribe a much higher valuation mm -hmm. to these names because they believe that at this point of time, the scope of operations is very, very large. And, you know, I, of course, we'll discuss the valuation part as well, whether the positives are in the price or not. Uh, but, you know, uh, thematic funds, usually experts ask only people with a lot of experience to enter into thematic funds. But definitely, as you said, it had to be shut a little bit before Not the really, exactly. closing date. It clearly means that there's a lot of interest in just a specific sector here. Uh, we spoke also about the order book of shipbuilding companies. Tell us more about that. Uh, what was the commentary like in quarter four? So, um, quarter four, actually, a lot of these names uh, saw a bit of volatility in terms of the stock prices because Q4 execution was slightly muted. Okay. But management commentary and the kind of ordering activity that they see was very, very positive. So which is why, you know, as soon as the dip came, the you know, markets bought it. So just look at Garden Reach uh, order book and we aren't taking into account uh, any of the recent order wins uh, that they are likely to sign. We are we are not taking into account any of the MOUs. We are mm -hmm. taking into account only the ones where the uh, letter of award has actually mm -hmm. come in. Garden Reach order book, over 25,000 crore. Cochin Shipyard, over 21,000 crore. Mazgaon Dock, over 40,000 crore. This as per reports, the company has not given it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, still the con call has yet happened. So despite, you know, revenue in FI23 being slightly muted, what's actually happened is that you're seeing revenue visibility mm. for a very long time of time because of the kind of order books that these mm. guys are sitting on and which, you know, portends quite well for the entire sector. A mascot talk has been buzzing off late and how there's so many new updates as far as orders are concerned. But of course, the next big trigger would be how they execute uh, the order books that have come in because there's a lot of hope and there's a lot of uh, excitement amongst investors with respect to defense team. And that takes me... Uh, to the execution actually depends on a couple of factors. Yeah. Number one, um, uh, you know, a lot of these guys uh, enter into JVs or they yeah. have uh, tie-ups with you know global manufacturers. So technology tie-up, mm -hmm. you know, you've seen a lot of these uh, orders not really going through or not fructifying because of uh, technology transfers not happening on yeah. time. But this time around, it's happening and. Hopefully, you will see execution pick up a lot more. So, you know, timelines is something that we need to keep an eye out for. Management, uh, you know, in the con call or in analyst meet, you know, give a specific timeline. But what we have to hold them to mm -hmm. is, you know, whether they are able to execute within the timeline. Delays do happen, raw material, price volatility. A lot of these are something that do happen. Of course. Um, so that's why that is something we'll be watching out for. And of course, that's what the street is betting on as well, right? Absolutely. But when we're talking about street betting on a lot on the defense theme, uh, where do valuations uh, stand? Uh, is the positive already priced in? Do you think um, this, this, there are more legs to this? So let's uh, you know, put the different space into two uh, baskets. Let's keep the shipbuilders aside for the <laughs> time being. And let's look at a you know, couple of companies that are widely tracked. Mm -hmm. Hindustan Aeronautics, Bharat Electronics, Bharat Dynamics. Uh, so let's look at the one year forward piece. HCL still trades at a quite a reasonable valuation of close to 18 to 19 times one year forward. Uh, Bharat Electronics uh, 21, 22 times. Uh, Bharat Electronics commentary this time around was quite strong. You know, Bharat Dynamics around 23 times. Now coming to the shipbuilders, they are a lot more reasonably valued. Okay. So they are, you know, this point of time, you know, post run up between 12 to 15 times one year mm. forward, which is still quite reasonable, mm. uh, taking into account the kind of order books that they are sitting mm. at. So it doesn't appear to be overvalued despite the sharp run-up that we've seen in the past couple of years. Okay, interesting. So defense theme and focus because we are seeing a lot of indigenization push. Some of these companies overnight have tied up with foreign companies for technology transfers, their order books. Shipbuilding in particular is seeing higher order books and there are a lot of orders in place as well. So execution remains the key and as Vivek was pointing out, uh, valuation is not very expensive also for shipbuilders between 12 to 15 times for the other companies, anywhere between 19 to 21 times. So a lot of triggers in place. Execution 
constitution remains the key, of course. But Vivek, thank you so much for joining us and making sense of the rally that we are seeing in the defense space. And um, uh, with that, folks, we'll take your leave on this edition of Who Moved the Market. Stay tuned for more updates.